This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Isn't that a beautiful passage? It is such a beautiful day that God's made for us. And uh, we appreciate... Well, yesterday was beautiful. It was just beautiful in a different way. But thank you all so much for being here today. We've got a wonderful service ahead of us. Uh, the chili cook-off follows the service right afterwards. Uh, and uh, I want you to notice in, you, in your bulletin how that works. Uh, this is how this is how we usually kick off our lot of Christmas offering emphasis uh, five dollars to get in and then that includes unlimited tasting <laughs> you can go to taste all of them if you want to and then uh, you vote for your favorite by donating at each station so uh, then all, the entire proceeds go to the lot of Christmas offering that helps us get get started so also to help us get started with our Lottie Moon emphasis. Uh, today we've got James and Mary Margaret Adair. Uh, they're home from Zambia for a little while and we're glad to have them here with us today. And James is going to be going to be sharing with us. Uh, Mary Margaret's going to be doing our Kids Corner this morning for us, so we're excited about that. Parents, grandparents, please, please, please pay attention to the notice that's in the bulletin. I put it at the very top in bold print to make sure nobody would miss it. This is so important. Uh, we're trying to make sure that our kids are safe. Uh, the back door is open. They could leave or somebody else could come in. We're not trying to scare anybody. We're just saying we're trying to be proactive and make sure that our kids are okay. So if your child needs to leave uh, the service, please go with them. Okay, so we can have an adult with them at all times. I want to remind you about the deacon nomination forms. They're back here in the, in the back foyer. Uh, we need to get those turned in. Uh, the deacon election is next Sunday. So please turn those in if at all possible as soon as you can. And I want to remind you about the living nativity. It's time to sign up for that for the positions. We've got several still open and that will be here before we know it. So any help that you can give us with that, we would sure appreciate it. Listen, even if you haven't done anything before, you know, it doesn't take a whole lot to put a costume on and go out there and stand for 30 minutes and be a shepherd <laughs> or be a wise man. Uh, that's all you have to do. You don't have to memorize any part. It's all you got to do. And listen, probably the best part, especially if it's cold, is to be a shepherd because we have a fire out there. <laughs> and you can stand by. But we need, we need angels and we need... Uh, where's Gary, uh, Sherry? Do we, need, do we still need an angel up, up high? Some of you guys who are, who are well experienced in spending hours and hours and hours in a deer stand, we're just asking you to spend two hours in a deer stand mounted to the utility pole out here looking like an angel. That may be the hardest part of all for, for some of you, but we, but we need somebody to do that. Um, and it, it, we rotate all the other positions, but because of where it is, that person has to get in position and stay there until, uh, until the drive through is over. So, if, if you can do it or you know somebody who can do it, Sybil Simmons, you're not qualified. We're not going <laughs> to... We're not going to let you do that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but anybody, any, just let us know if you can do that. We need somebody to step up, step up and, and do that. Please, on the back of your bulletin, pay attention to the information there about the Light of Moon Christmas offering. It's, it's just so, um, so encouraging to see all, uh, the, the kind of uh, results that our, our gifts are, are, are getting. And you, and you notice that this Light of Moon Christmas offering funds the majority of the work for the International Mission Board for the year. That's how important this is. And as we remind you every year, not even the postage it takes to send it is subtracted from your gifts. It goes 100% uh, to, uh, to, to, to International Missions. Well, James, I'm not going to stand up again to introduce you. I'm doing the invocation. I'm doing the, doing the offertory prayer. But when it comes time to preach, you have the floor, okay? Miss Debbie? Sarah. Oh, Sarah's going to play. You told me that. Didn't you?
Oh wow, there's so many. Maybe I figure out this one. I'll sit down. Oh good. Come sit down. Can you help mommy? Yeah. Good morning, everybody. Wow. How's everybody this morning? Good? Did y'all get cold this morning? Y'all look so nice. What is, um, what are we going to celebrate this week? Christmas? Not yet. Thanksgiving. That's right. Why, um, so, let's, I'm going to read a Bible verse about Thanksgiving, okay? It's from Psalms 100. You know, does anybody know where the book of Psalms is in the Bible? You do? It's like poems and lots of, lots of different ways to say thank you and praise God. All right, so I'm going to read from Psalm 100, 4 and 5. Okay, I want you to listen to the words, and then we're going to talk about it afterwards, okay? It says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving, and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, and praise his name. For the Lord is good, and his love lasts forever. His faithfulness continues through all the generations. Why should we say thank you to God? That's right. That's right. So, um, what did what did we learn about God in this verse? What are some? Did you did you hear some words about God? He helps us. But do you remember in the in the verse? Did y'all? Pay attention to the words that are talking about God. He's He's good. That's right. Should we thank God this year because He's good? He's good to us, right? What else did you hear about God? About His love. That's right. He helps. How long? How long does God's love last? Forever. Forever. Is that a long time? That's a really long time. Infinity. It's infinity. That's right. <laughs> and what about his faithfulness? What what does it mean to be faithful? Does anybody know? Faithful. Faithful. Yes, thankful. All right, but faith when we say that God is faithful, that means what? He has power, but um, I think what it means is that He's always with us. When, especially when we need Him, He's always with us. He's faithful. He's always going to be with us. That's right. He's right beside us. That's so right. So He's faithful. His faithfulness lasts or continues through all generations. Think about your grandparents and your great grandparents and your great great grandparents. God was with them, and God is with all of you now, today, right? And forever and ever and ever. He's always going to be there, especially when you need Him. Okay, so why do we think, why do we uh, celebrate th Thanksgiving every year? Not yet. That's, that's Easter. That's okay. That's right. Why do we celebrate it every year? To celebrate God. And do y'all remember what happened at the first Thanksgiving? You, I'm sh have you learned that in school? What happened? <coughs> yes, they gave thanks because God had protected them through the year and the given them all the food they needed. The That's right, yeah. So we thank God every year. They started it a long, long time ago, and we thank God every year for all the good things that He's done in our lives for the whole year. How, can, can someone tell me what God has done for you this year that's good? Uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. Good. Yes. That's good. Uh huh. Help us go through swims. Okay. Yeah, that's right. All right, do you see this hand? Can anybody, what does this say? 
Well, I started one. I thought we could finish the rest of them. What are we thankful? What are you? What are you thankful for this year? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Let's say um, God. We're thankful for God or Jesus. Why are we thankful for Jesus? That's right. That's right. And so. That's right. Y'all, y'all been getting some good lessons at church. That's great. Okay. What about our parents? Are we thankful for our parents? Yes. Yeah. Why are we thankful for our parents? Because, because they, they help food. <laughs> because, they, because they help us. They, they help us. That's right. And don't die. That's right. That's right. Good. That's a good answer, Joshua. That's good. Okay. What else are you thankful for? We're thankful for our parents. We're thankful for God. What are we? My brother. Your brother and sisters. I'm thankful for my sister. Okay. I'm thankful for this. I'm thankful. Church. That's a good one for our church. Why are we? Why are you thankful for church? Because we can study about God. God. That's right. I'm thankful for God. For the Bible, the Bible and the church. Uh huh. What about school? Are you thankful for school? Yep. Do you like going to school? <laughs> Good. It's good to love school because school helps you. Your mom, of course. Yes. That's the American flag. Okay. The American flag is a beautiful, beautiful sight to see. Good. Anything else we're thankful for? Food. That's right. It's a warm, a bed. On these cold nights. I'm thankful for everything in the world. Clothes. Mm -hmm. Clothes. Shelter. A shelter. Hutch, I know you're thankful for Christmas tree cakes, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> Hutch. Hutch has eaten a record number of Christmas. Who else has had a Christmas tree cake already? Presents on Christmas. Oh, wow. Well, y'all have a lot to be thankful for. So let's... I want y'all to, yeah, go home this week and I want y'all to um, get your mom or dad or someone to help you trace your hand and I want you to write out your five things, five things that you're thankful for. So that, I'm yes. I'm thankful for for a blue puzzle. I'm thankful for a blue Okay. All right, Hutch. Chick fil A. I'm thankful for a blue puzzle. I'm thankful for a blue Oh, thank you, Joshua. You're so sweet. Good. All right. So this week, I want you all to go and do this and think of five things that you're thankful for. And you can tell them to your parents or your family at Thanksgiving. And so it's good to remember to be thankful for all the good things that God does for us and how he protects us and, and keeps us safe. And he, he helps us to grow and learn. And um, So let me pray. Do, we, do you pray? Okay. Let me pray for us that we would remember to be thankful this week. Okay. God, thank you so much for these kids and I just pray that you would bless them this week and I pray that we would all just remember all the good things that you have done for us in our lives, Lord, this week as we celebrate Thanksgiving and we are with family and friends, Lord, that you would just bless us and bring to our minds all of the wonderful things that you have done for us and Lord, we just thank you so much for Jesus and for his sacrifice and his, um, his love for us, Lord, that he showed us on the cross and and we thank, we thank you for our salvation and pray that you would continue to show us and to use us to help be a light in the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good job, guys. Another thing that we that we are thankful for for this church is our children's activities on Sunday afternoons and we will have our regular scheduled activities this afternoon from 4 to 7 at 6 o'clock our children's choirs will be singing for the community Thanksgiving service in here which is at 6 so please come and support support our children and uh, we'll kick off the rest of our Thanksgiving we've been blessed by the hand of the Lord.
Yankee Choir and Miss Debbie for that. Let's turn in our hymnals to 576, Give Thanks. We're going to do the responsive reading above. Please read the bold print. Let's stand together as we read from God's Word and as we sing. 576. Worshippers are first. Above all, put on love, the perfect bond of unity. And let the peace of the Messiah, to which you are also called in one body, control your hearts. Be thankful. Let the message about the Messiah dwell richly among you, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom and singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. Therefore, as you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, walk in Him, rooted and built up in Him, and established in the faith just as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. We do give thanks to you today. We praise you, Lord, for all that you've done for us. Our, our hearts are full of blessings, Lord, and we pray that today you'd help us to be a little more aware of them. Help, help us, Lord, to notice the things that you've done for us, to pay attention to the gifts that you give us. Lord, they come in so many different shapes and forms. Sometimes they creep up on us when we're not expecting them. Sometimes we can see them coming. But, Lord, your blessings are more than we can count. And we praise You. We praise Your name, Lord, for all that You've done for us. And we look forward, Lord, to, to knowing deep in our hearts that the biggest blessing that we have ever, ever received is forgiveness of our sins and eternal life. We pray, Lord, that if somebody here today doesn't know You as Lord and Savior, this will be the day when that changes. This will be the day, Lord, they stop running away from You and they run toward You. This will be the day, Lord, when they begin their eternal life experience with You. We thank You, Father, for hearing us, for, for blessing us the way You do, but most of all, for loving us with a love that never changes. In Jesus' name, Amen. Let's continue singing by turning to 636. Come, ye thankful people, come. All four verses. How can I repay the Lord all the good He has done for me?
for that good singing. At this time, please stand for the doxology number 668. Remain standing for the offertory prayer to follow. Let's pray. Lord, while we pause to thank you for all your blessings, we're reminded, Lord, that your word says that we should give a portion of it back to you for your work. And Lord, we are grateful and we want to be obedient. So pray now, Lord, that as, as these gifts are given, these tithes and offerings, that you will multiply them, Lord. You will honor them and you will use them in your kingdom. And bless those who give, Lord, in proportion to their faithfulness. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We've been working on this song for several, several weeks, and we really love it. We got the opportunity to see Casting Crowns live, um, I think in, was it the beginning of October? And it was really powerful, and uh, the hearts of the gentlemen who wrote this song are so pure, and it is so right and true that Jesus is a friend of us, and that it's not ours to judge anyone because it belongs to God. And sometimes we forget that. Um, the solos are going to be Mike, Hickey, <laughs> Timmy, <laughs> Cranfield, Sarah, and Precious, and Lily.
Wendesa, 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 All right, well, um, we just wanted to show you a few pictures of uh, our lives in Zambia and some things that uh, we see every day. But uh, anyway, like Brother Rocky was saying, I'm, I'm James Adair and my wife Mary Margaret. We have three kids, uh, Hutch, Luli, and Charlie. And we live in Caputo, Zambia. And we're missionaries with the International Mission Board. And so we're just uh, pleased to be able to be back here. Uh, for those of you who don't know, this is my home church where I grew up. And uh, so we're just blessed to be able to be back here and to talk to you about uh, what we do and about uh, the International Mission Board and the Lighting Moon Christmas Offering and just all the many ways that you here at the Utica Baptist Church can be a part of reaching the world internationally for Jesus Christ. Um, this year, uh, the Lottie Moon Christmas Offering, our theme is uh, Totally His. Totally His. And that is what, um, what we, we want, we all want to be as Christians. We want to strive to be totally His. And everything that we do, uh, we want to honor God. We want to deny ourselves and to become more Christ-like and to be completely His. And so, this year, as you think about um, your participation in international missions, um, we just pray that in your heart you would really seek to be totally His. And whatever God is calling you to do, in whatever capacity that may be, we pray that you would accept that call and take that responsibility. Um, we have been serving in Kaputa, Zambia now for seven years, believe it or not. It's a long time. I feel like um, I, it, it's amazing that we've been there that long, but uh, it's just... I, I feel so much older now when I come back to America and just see the different things and people are calling me yes sir and all that kind of thing. It, it's strange to me because uh, when I left seven years ago it wasn't like that. But anyway, it's good to be home and um, yeah, I just want to talk a little bit about what God's doing in Kaputa, Zambia. Um, if you don't know, our primary job assignment with the International mission board is church planning. We went to Kaputa, Zambia. Um, it was classified as an unreached, unengaged people group according to the IMB's statistics and so um, that's why the IMB chose to put a missionary there. And so we went there in uh, 2006 and there was no Baptist church in Kaputa district and the district is a pretty good size, about the size of three counties probably uh, here in Mississippi. So um, just through um, the work of the Lord, through prayer, uh, when we left uh, a month ago, there's four churches, four Baptist churches in Kabuta District. And uh, they're, they're small. The biggest one probably has about, uh, about 40 baptized members. But uh, still, God is working. And we're so pleased to be a part of it and pleased to be, to be able to see fruit in our ministry because so often missionaries don't get to see any fruit. And it's a blessing. And we're just thankful and um, we just are overwhelmed with what God can do uh, because we... Every day we just feel so dependent on Him and, you know, we just... It, there's just things we have to overcome as missionaries and the task is large but you know God is working and God is there and he's good and he's faithful and all those things and we just get to see him work and it's just a blessing to our lives and um, as missionaries I was sharing the other day that it's really about you know I think as a missionary sometimes we get caught up in the idea that that we are going uh, to, to go to Zambia and we're going to save the people of Zambia, but uh, once you get there and God starts working on your heart, you really feel, you really come to the understanding that what we do, God putting us there, is really part of our sanctification process. And God is working in us. 
And God is doing major things in our own hearts, more, even more so than what we're able to do uh, or what we, anything we can really take credit for doing in Zambia. So it's just amazing to serve there. Uh, I want to tell you some of the stories, um, some things you guys can be in prayer about. Um, I don't know if you saw in the slideshow, there was two guys walking in uh, regalia in graduation um, clothes. Those two men are our first graduates of the Caputa Bible School. Um, and what that is, is, is something I started just when we left, we, we left on our first, uh, went back on our first fur furlough. After our first three years, we came to here. We went back to, uh, to Zambia. And I started this immediately, so it's been going now for three years. And so what that is, is one, uh, twice a year, uh, we invited uh, the leadership and the churches to come in. And they camp out in Caputa, in tents, in the little town there. And we have a Bible school for a week long. And we, we, they get up at 8 a.m. And we study um, theology until 4 o'clock that evening. And then they go to bed, wake up, and do that for a week. And then on Saturday we have tests. And we, we administer uh, written tests to those who can read and oral tests to those who cannot read. And these men... Uh, we're faithful to come to every session and finish three years of that doing coming in and staying a, a week long for twice a year and so they are our first graduates of Caputa Bible School so that's a blessing because it just it takes time you know just imagine yourself as an American giving up a week of your time twice a year and camping out just to be able to study God's Word I mean that would be a huge sacrifice for us and so these men have done that and it's just amazing because um, just to see their lives transform and to see what God uh, has brought them out of the traditional beliefs if you saw the there were some uh, weird pictures of like uh, there were some beer bottles and a man's carved face in those pictures I don't know if you remember that those are what they would call charms and those are the uh, those things contain uh, spiritual powers and, 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 and there's a very large preoccupation and, and, and infatuation with those types of things in Caputa and, and, and the belief of, of those things possessing supernatural powers and, and so the people have to come out of those traditional beliefs uh, to be Christians and to walk with Christ and, and one of those men especially had, had experienced a lot of that firsthand and had come out of that and it's just amazing to see um, what God has done in their lives. Um, uh, one of them is named Chileshi, and the other one is Mr. Quimba. And both of those men have been very faithful and have been uh, very faithful to be discipled and to walk with Christ. And they're both uh, leaders in one of the churches there in Caputa. Uh, another thing we were able to do recently, about probably four or five months before we left, we were able to take a survey trip into uh, the Congo and it was a part of the Congo that had been um, it, um, what we would call war-torn. Uh, they had rebels come through there, destroyed a lot of the, the livelihood of all the, the villagers and all that that, was, that were living there. And so it was just a lot of devastation. That was back in uh, 2006 that that happened. And so we took a survey trip up in there to see what type of, uh, what, what the situation is with the people there, what are the needs there. Uh, how we as the IMB can can help those people and uh, it was just a lot of unknown when we were preparing to go because there were no missionaries in there and uh, we didn't really have anyone we could call and talk to and ask them about. Um, the language of Congo is, the, the national language is French and then they'd speak a lot of tribal languages, none of which I knew. And so it was just going to be a big challenge as far as communication because I don't speak French and I don't speak their language either. So it was, that, was going to be an over, that was going to be something we were going to have to overcome. And plus it was just the roads were just uh, pretty much awful. And so we had, if you saw that, there was a picture of one of the bridges we had to cross, just the logs going across the road there. So, um, you know, a lot, a lot to be anxious about, a lot to worry about, but uh, God uh, was there. He, he protected us. We went up, we traveled in a day's drive into the Congo there, um, and were able to go to a place where we were, we had heard 
that there were some Baptist churches at one point. So we went there and we were able to find men uh, who were still leading a, a, a small Baptist church there. And it, it was amazing and a blessing and just to be able to visit with those men and encourage them and uh, just to see that even through all the difficulty that, that they had been through that they were still following after Christ and still uh, gathering together and, and, and still trying to keep those churches uh, in that area alive. Um, and we, we, you know, that was part of our strategy now. We're implementing ways to go up in there and to give more support to them. It's just difficult uh, logistically to do that, but we're, we're, we're seeking ways. And, and that's something that you can pray about is just, um, just how to help them out you know, as, as our brothers and sisters in Christ in a difficult area of the world. And, you know, it was amazing. One of the men who, who was in one of our churches there in Caputa, he went with us because he was born in that area of Congo. And so he volunteered to go with us to help communicate. And so, because he knew Bimba, that's our language that we speak, and he also knew Swahili, so he was going to translate from Bimba to Swahili for us. And he had been a member of our church for about a year. I didn't know a whole lot about him, uh, but I saw that he was trying to walk with the Lord and do good things. And so I, of course, said, yeah, you can come with us. And so we went together, and when we went up to this town, it was called Moba, uh, and when we got to this town, he began to tell us about how this is where he grew up. This was his hometown. And, um, and so we were, you know, listening to his story and he said, but I had to flee here when the rebels came through. And he said that they came through and they started, uh, you know, firing guns and, and, and shooting people and killing things in our village. And so I had to take off running. And when I started running, I got hit in the head with a bullet. And he showed me the scar on the side of his head where he had, the bullet had grazed him. So... It was just amazing. He said that he ran and ran. I may need you to come up here and tell us. <laughs> anyway, he ran for two days until he got to Zambia. And, he's, and just to hear his story was just amazing. And, and to hear the things he had been through. And now he was walking with Christ. And he's, he's even willing to go back there. He did such a good job with the kids. <laughs> You just need to, you need to do this, Mary Mark, because I can't. So, <clears throat> lots to pray about. Uh, God's doing great things. <laughs> yeah, he was, uh, that's a Christian artist. Thank you, Miss Judy, for trying to change the subject. Uh, that's a Christian artist from Lusaka. And his name is Ephraim. Uh, and uh, he's, he's from the capital city of Lusaka, Zambia. And so he's, he's a very popular musician now in Zambia. And he was singing, Mwele Sa Mwe Tata, that's You Are God, You Are My Father. Um, and he was saying, basically the song was like, just, just let my, my body be yours and uh, work within me and things like that. So... That was in Bimba. That was in our local language of Bimba. Yeah, he's, uh, Bimba is spoken throughout most of Zambia there, so uh, he's, uh, he was singing in Bimba. So that's, that was a sample of our, of our language. But uh, thank you. That helped, Miss Judy. You'll be on standby, Miss Judy, with more questions. Uh, okay, so um, yeah, just God's doing amazing things, and uh, we're just so blessed to be there. And there's so many things. We, what, what we're doing right now um, with those four churches, uh, really, the discipling those four churches is, is taking up the majority of my time. And uh, I'm, in, I'm in those villages, 
four days out of the week just doing Bible studies, encouraging them to do evangelism, things like that. Uh, and the Bible school, we're doing some other things. Um, but my time is beginning to be more and more occupied with ministry. And as that happens, uh, we're changing our focus now. We're trying to get those four existing churches to start planning churches and to start doing what I'm doing. And so uh, the big prayer request now is for those churches to take over the responsibility of planning churches and evangelism and to go out and to locate areas around that they can reasonably get to. Of course, I have a car that gives me a huge advantage, but they have bicycles and they can travel a long way on a bicycle. And so, uh, and, and, and they speak the language much better than I do. They're able to move with ease. And so, they could be much better church planners than I am. And so, my prayer is that they would take over that responsibility. And so, um, you know, we as missionaries, that's part of our job. We want to work our way out of a job. And so hopefully uh, within the next few years there's even one group who started what we would call an outreach in another village. They're going over there and they're teaching Bible studies and so in the hopes of planning a church. And so our, our, our huge prayer request now is that we would see what we call a second generation church. And that is when a church that we as missionaries plant plants another church. And so I, I would really uh, love and covet your prayers in that, that, that we would reach that point in Caputa where we can see that second generational growth and we would see the leaders take the responsibility to do those things. Um, but um, as, you're, as you're coming up on the, the Christmas season and as we're going to enter into our time of, of Lottie Moon Christmas offering, and uh, this, this Christmas season, I know that we have tons of charitable organizations here in the United States, and there's lots of good ways to spend your money and to support uh, uh, ministries and, uh, of different various kinds. But as you're approaching this time, I just want to uh, just remind you and, and put an ad in for the International Mission Board and through for, for Lottie Moon, because... Um, as I said, you can, you, you can spend your money and, and all those things are good that we support in, as, as Americans, but remember that the International Mission Board, uh, Southern Baptist Churches and the International Mission Board, what we strive to do is purely evangelical missions. And that means that everything that we do has to, in some way or another, be towards the goal of facilitating church planning. And so as a, as when, I'm, when I'm planning strategy, when I'm doing things as a missionary, everything that I do, every dollar that I spend a, as a missionary, I have to justify it in how this is going to facilitate a church at some point down the road. This is going to help plant a church. And why is that so important? Um, I believe that's important because I believe the church is... God's way of discipling believers. And I believe in the great commission that God has given to us to go and to make disciples. And that as, as we as, as, as Christians, a lot of times we fail to do that. We go and we make believers or we go and we make, do great uh, uh, conferences or, or something like that. And, and we see people come to Christ, but discipleship, is a lot of times where we drop the ball. And so uh, I, I encourage you to remember the IMB because our, our motto, our, the, the, the centerpiece of what all the strategic things that we do is the great commission of making disciples of all nations. And so uh, as, as we, even as you just heard what we're trying to do in Caputa, we want to, we want to plant churches. We want to evangelize the lost, share the good news, and disciple local believers to become their own church and to do their own missions and to do their own church planning. Because that is what we believe in the Bible God set forth as His strategy and what He wanted us to do. So as you're approaching that time and, and you're thinking about where to donate your money, um, I, just, I pray that you would remember the Lighting Moon Christmas offering because as Brother Rocky was saying, that goes to support over 5,000 missionary families living across the world doing the same thing that I'm doing, trying to plant churches 
among local believers. Something that's sustainable and something that will last. And hopefully those churches will even join along with us and start planning other churches as well. And so it, it, it's a great way as a Christian to spend your money this holiday season and to support uh, God's work overseas. You know, the Great Commission, when you think about that, when you think about that word commission, um, what that means really is God, is talking about God, Jesus Christ bestowing His authority on us as Christians to go and make disciples. He is commissioning us, all of His disciples, to make other disciples. That's what the Great Commission is. And so, it's not our responsibility as missionaries alone. It's our responsibilities as disciples of Jesus Christ to make other disciples. And not just make disciples here in Utica, although that should definitely be part of what you're doing here as a church. But God has not just given you, not just given us the responsibility of Utica, Mississippi. He's given us the responsibility of the world. And that's a big responsibility. So think big and think about that. That word commission, commission. It really, you should understand it, you should hear it as co-mission. Meaning that it only works if we all are working together in a co-mission because um, there's, there's a, a lot of expense, there's a lot of prayer that is needed to do what we do as missionaries. And if we don't have those things, it's very difficult, if not impossible, for us to do our job. So please remember that, and please remember that God is calling all of us to be part of His commission. He's commissioning all of us. I want to read uh, quickly Psalm 78, verse 9. I know I'm going over time. It's probably because of that, that, um, that five minutes of, of weeping. You're going to have to erase that. That doesn't count. Okay? Uh, Psalms 79. I want to read verse 9. Uh, a missionary friend of mine in Mozambique shared this with me one day and I was greatly encouraged by it. Um, Psalm 78 verse 9. The Ephraimites, armed with the bow, some verses say skilled with the bow, turned back in the day of battle. The Ephraimites, armed with the bow, turned back in the day of battle. Um... I think this verse speaks to us as Christians because, and it should speak to us as Americans, as, uh, because um, we are skilled, we are equipped with the bow. And we cannot deny that. And we can play all types of excuses before God, but the simple fact is, is that we are skilled and discipled and equipped with the bow. And God is calling us to go out into the world and to fight this battle. And we can either accept the call and step up and fight the battle that we are skilled and pre been prepared for all of our lives to fight, or we can turn back like the Ephraimites. And so, I hope that speaks to your heart this morning and encourages you that, yes, you have blessings in your life. Yes, some of us... Like the, like the kids who came forward this morning have heard the gospel since we were in nursery. We've been learning the things of God in Sunday school. We've been growing in church, been going to Sunday school classes and uh, Bible studies and hearing sermons all of our lives. But that's not for us. That is to prepare us to make other disciples. That is to equip us for the battle that's taking place. And we as Christians are being called to accept this challenge and to go to war against spiritual darkness. And if we don't, then we will be remembered throughout history just like the Ephraimites. The Americans, although skilled with the bow, although thoroughly educated in the things of God, although thoroughly equipped to do all types of ministry, we turn back in the day of battle. 
And I pray that that won't be us. I pray that each and every day, in every way that we can possibly can, we will fight this battle that's going on. And it's a worldwide battle. It's not just on the local scale. We have to look at, at the world and we have to decide how we're going to fight this battle. And, 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 and my challenge to you as a church is to continue to pray. And I know that so many of you are praying and I thank you and I'm so thankful for that. And I pray that you would encourage And So many Sunday school classes have uh, adopted us and are praying for us and, and are supporting us and we, we appreciate that. Thank you so much for that. Never forget that you are part of this battle that's taking place and you may not feel it you may not know it you may doubt that you are equipped but you're much more equipped than mo most people are equipped in this world and we we have to remember that as Christians and we have to step up and fight this battle um, our goal this year with Lottie Moon 175 million dollars that's a big chunk of change right <laughs> 175 million dollars but we claim as Southern Baptists to have almost 16 million in the United States. All right? Now, if we have 16 million, then that's really about $11 a person to reach that goal. But we know how church numbers are. Sometimes they're skewed. Right, Brother Rocky? So let's just take away half of that and say maybe we have 8 million. Maybe. I don't know. 8 million would mean we're right at about $22 a person to reach that goal. Brother Rocky? I think that's reasonable. $22 a person. But $22, you know, I'm, myself and Mary Margaret, you know, we're, we're poor people. I don't know if you know that or not. But in American standards, we are classified as poor. So, um, you know, but we have so much more than the rest of the world. And we forget that sometimes, you know. And $22, the average... You know, American probably spends that on Coca-Cola in two months. $22. So we really need to think about it. We really need to pray about it. We really need to ask ourselves, what can we do? How can we truly make a, distance, uh, a difference for the kingdom of God? How can we fight this battle? Some of us can't go. That's fine. If God's not calling you to go, you don't need to go. But you need to take part in the battle somehow because you are equipped. And so you need to ask yourself this, this, this season, how can I give... And not just give out of my excess, but give sacrificially to the work of the kingdom. We as Christians, we have to make sacrifices. That's what our king was all about, wasn't it? Was making sacrifices. He came to give it all, to give his life. And so if we as a Christian aren't prepared to make sacrifices, then we're not very Christ-like. And so we have to examine ourselves, we have to examine our hearts, and to ask ourselves, are we truly making a sacrifice? Or are we just giving out of our excess? So this season, as, as we remember the, the, the battle that's going on, and as Brother Rocky and Miss Judy continue to remind you about the Lottie Moon Christmas offering, I pray that this season we can give, and we can give sacrificially, for the cause of international missions. You know, God is, has called us all, like I was saying earlier. Don't, you know, me and Mary Margaret, we're careful with that term called to missions because I believe that God has called us all to missions. You know, God, through our following him and through our sanctification process has led us to be missionaries in Zambia. But the call of going and making disciples to all nations, that was given to every one of us. So, open yourself up to that. And let God come into your heart and direct you as to what that means for you. And make sure that in your life you are taking part in what God has called you as a Christian to do. It may be give financially. It may be pray fervently. And it may be go. And a lot of people really don't want to hear that last one. But it may be go. Maybe God is calling someone here or many of us here to go. Don't be scared of that call. If that's what God is putting on your heart, 
accept it because it's much greater than anything you can find here. Mine and my life and Mary Mark's life, we've been blessed tremendously because God called us to missions. And yeah, we have to do without some things, but we get to see amazing things every day. So don't be scared of that. Don't deny God. Whatever He wants to do in your life this, at this time, wherever you're at, be a part of what God is doing internationally. Be a part of what God is trying to do in this world and accept His call. Um... I, I, I know that we feel uh, the prayers of this church in Kaputa when we're doing these things that we really don't have any idea what we're doing. <laughs> it's nice to know that we're being prayed for when you do those things. And please continue to do that. Please continue to remember us. And please continue to remember the people of Kaputa, Zambia. Pray for them. Pray for their lives. Um, and just pray that God would do something amazing there. Continue to do something amazing. I believe He's doing amazing things, but something even beyond our expectations is what we want to see. And so this morning, um, I want to wrap up. I had another video, but it's about three hours long. I don't know if y'all have time for that. Um, but just wrapping up, I just I want to give an invitation. I want to give an invitation to you for anyone that's here that, that doesn't know Jesus Christ, who hasn't truly humbled their hearts before Him, accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, and chosen to follow Him with the rest of your life. If you've never done that, then do it this morning. Because um, there's no greater thing that you can find in this world. Your life, your very existence is for that purpose. So you need to start down that path today. And maybe I also want to give an invitation for anyone here who is feeling that God is calling them to do some type of ministry, but they have been hesitant. They've been scared. You've been putting it off. But you feel that burden. Maybe there's someone here today that God is calling to go. If that is you, I just pray that you won't say no. Because God can do something with your life that is beyond your imagination. It's not about your skills. It's not about you going to a foreign place and impressing them with your amazing skills for the kingdom. No. It's about God sanctifying your own heart. You accepting that call and going and allowing God to work in you and work through you to do amazing things for the kingdom. So if you're here this morning and you want to trust in Christ, please come at this time and do that. Or if you want to accept some type of call that God is putting on your heart, please come and do that this morning. Thank you. Brother Rock, come.
Well, thank you so much for your patience, James. Thank you so much. And I tell you what, don't apologize. One thing that we Baptists need a little bit more of, maybe a whole lot more of, is tears. We need, we need a few more tears around here. And we thank you for, um, for allowing the Lord to use you exactly the way you are. And Mayor Margaret, thank you for your, for your work and your service. Um, I want to remind you about the uh, chili cook-off. We're going to let our, our cooks go. Our, those who, of you who are serving, we'll let you go ahead and go. Now we're going to end our service just a little bit differently today. I tell you, I, just watching who left, some of these I know their chili is hot. <laughs> so be careful when you go over there. You eat at your own risk. Um, rather, rather than have our, our blessing then and then end, we're going to do the blessing and then James is going to end this with prayer. Okay? Blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you. And be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face toward you and give you peace. James, lead us in prayer. Amen. I'm going to do something a little strange for Baptists. I'm going to, I'm going to pray in tongues. Is that okay? <laughs> yeah. So uh, this is the Maybe most... <laughs> yeah. the, uh, no, this is, uh, this is Bimba. And since so many people want to hear Bimba, uh, they always ask me to hear some Bimba. I'm going to close us in prayer today in, in Bimba. Okay? Let's pray. Lesa, tu la isa kuli imwe, non baline, ni cho tu le fwaya, utashi imwe, malifion se fi suma, mule chita mu mwea shesu. Lesa, non ben chita tu le mi fwaya, ukupala i fwe, muli fion se tu le chita mu ishi na yen upano pachalo, idio tu lea, ukufuma pano pene, lesa, tu le tu le melomba, ukwafwa i fwe, ukupela fion se kuli imwe, en ukuikala pano i chalo. Ukuchindika yishina yenu. Lesa, idio, tualefuma, pano pene. Lesa, tule milombo kwafo ifwe, ukuba lubuto lienu. En ukubonfia mwea shesu. Ukutangili la bambi, kuisa, kuni imwe. Nukucheti kela muni Yesu Kristu. Fionse tule lombo mwishina yakwa Yesu Kristu. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much.